listen to here the frugal crafter it's part two of our scrapbooking basics video series that i promised you last week um we're going to talk about albums. Um, you really want to think about what sort of album you want because that's kind of a commitment. You're going to be using that same album over and over again. And you want to have something that will suit your needs and not fall apart, you know, six months down the line. I'll show you the album that I use and also some other options that you may find more suitable for you. So what I like is the We Are Memory Keepers um, 12 by 12 D ring albums. So it's about 12, it's a little over 12 inches high, about 12 and a half inches high, and it's about 15 inches wide. So the downside to this is that you have to make sure you have shelves that will accommodate this because it's tall and it's deep. Um, and the reason the album is deep is because you have these really long, these really big rings on the inside to hold your album pages. The benefit of this book is that I can get a lot of layouts. I can get a full year of layouts and I scrapbook a lot. If you don't scrapbook as much as I do, then you could probably get a couple years in an album. Um, I also like to mix and match my um, pages, so I might do some pocket pages here, which, um, by the way, I like to store my photos right in my scrapbook album. That way um, they can still be looked at until I get around to scrapbooking them and I can kind of organize them. And then sometimes I look through and I said, you know, I really don't need to put these on a page. They're fine. Just like that. I have a scrapbook page of baseball already. I don't need to scrapbook every baseball photo, but I still want them in there. So I'll just put them in like a pocket page, like a project life page. Um, and I'll show you an example where I've just, and like here, I like to collage my photos. So like on this layout, I have all these photos from Acadia National Park. And what I did here was I mixed and matched my page protectors. I put some eight and a half by 11s in here because they're the same, same size. And so I was able to put these collage uh, pages right in the middle of my two 12 by 12 layouts and that was really uh, really space saving and time saving and I get I didn't have to pick and choose I could use all my photos so that's why I really like the 12 by 12 D ring albums there are a couple companies that make them in fact I ordered a project life one this year and I had to send it back so it was damaged and then I got another one and it also had some some gouges in it and I was just like uh, next year I'm going back to the We Are Memory Keepers 12 by 12 albums. They're um, like a faux leather covering, but they're super sturdy and um, the handling that my albums get, they really need to be sturdy. So there, that's my pick. That's what I like to use. But again, the downside is that it's a really deep, large album, so you need shelf space for that. And I, I had to have a shelf made for this size because it, it's, I want the books accessible so that my kids can pull them off the shelf and look at them, but they take up a massive amount of space. So you just need to keep that in mind when you're scrapbooking. Now, maybe you're a digital scrapbooker or you want to do more digital pages, whether you don't have the space to spread out or you just don't want to deal with the cleanup and the mess. I went through a phase like that where I digital scrapbooked and what I used was a um, eight by eight perfect scrapbook. This is by Colorbox and they make a 12 by 12 version too. So instead of it being, it would be a little bit shorter than the um, We Are Memory Keepers book that I showed you. And what it has is a postbound system. So like this is my son when he was really, really little. Um, so there are, there are um, the page protectors are eight by eight. You can see, I'm gonna hold it back a little bit. And under here, there's these two little bolts and you would just take out these little bolts and you can add spacers so you can put in um, as many pages as you want. So as your album grows, you add spacers so that your spine gets bigger and then you can keep on adding and uh, you can make this probably a couple inches wide. The only downside to this, and I don't think you'd have a problem with an eight by eight, but with a 12 by 12, um, sometimes uh, the little posts was, would unscrew from each other and then the pages would be all over the place. It was a, it was a nightmare, but, um, but that's why I, I, I did like the perfect scrapbooks by color box before I found the uh, D ring ones. Um, but I like that because when I do a 12 by 12 page, I usually, when I do a digital page, I'll make a 12 by 12, 300 DPI uh, file, and then I will make my page, but I'll print it out to eight by eight because I only have an eight and a half by 11 inch printer. So then I would just, you know, print out my pages and slip them in here. And the nice thing about this, if you have small children, if you've got small children, you probably don't have that much time. You probably don't have that much space to scrap and you probably can't leave your supplies out all, the, all over the place. So Digital scrapbooking is great. Just print, and you can print them out eight by eight on a regular home printer. And then kids can pick this up and look through it because it's lightweight and it's easy. And if they spill juice on it, you can print out another copy, which that's pretty cool. And you can also the also great thing about this is you can make copies for your relatives, like your your mother, your mother-in-law, your aunts. You know, you can make copies for them too. So that's one of the big advantages of, of digital scrapbooking. I don't do it very much, but when the kids were little, I found it to be extremely useful. Um, so again, these are the 12 by 12 post bound albums. Many companies make them. Colorbox, probably the perfect scrapbook by Colorbox is the highest quality one. And, uh, and they, well, I'd say they're probably about $20 in a uh, 12 by 12 album. Whereas the 
um, the D ring one. This is this would be more like thirty, I think. You know, and there's sales and stuff, so it's it's an investment. It's the thing you're going to use the most, so just keep that in mind. Now, another type of album um, that is still available are the spy the uh, spiral bound albums, and these are really nice for kids because your your pages are already in there. I don't want to see me when I was a chunky little baby. <laughs> me a chunky little baby, isn't that cute? Don't you just want to squeeze those cheeks? Awful cute. Um, so these, your pages are in your album. And so you, if you want pattern paper, you'd glue it right on top of the cardstock pages. Now the downside to this is that, look, it turns into a big triangle as you get it filled up because your pages get thicker than what the book can accommodate. Um, so just keep that in mind. You can get page protectors that like these just slide over your pages. So you can still use page protectors with these. Um, and I just have to look through because I have some college pictures in here and my friends might not appreciate that. Oh, here's a lovely wedding photo, me and my hubby. Um, so you can slide over the page protectors and um, you know, keep your pages safe like that. So that's a nice option. I like it for kids because they, kids tend to just do a page and move on. They don't worry about chronological order as much. They just want to have a good time and do some scrapbooking. So this is my best bet for kids. It's not too expensive. Um, or if you're not doing anything too lumpy and you just want to make a quick, um, a quick book. But once you start to get, look, this is so cute. Oh, <laughs> my little chunky baby. Um, so, you know, once you start getting felt and, you know, other embellishments in there, it just starts to get a little too thick for that. But um, Spiral Bound, it is certainly durable. My kids have flipped through this a lot and I haven't had any wear or tear. I don't know who made this one, but um, that was just, you know, craft store, cheapy, I'm sure. Um, and then the last type I want to show you, um, they're not as popular, but they're actually a really good bet. And you may have some of these lying around. You may have the option, somebody may have, like, uh, handed you some supplies, some supplies and you may have had one of these in your stash. These are the strap hinge books and these are the type that Creative Memories made famous. And um, as you can see, this 12 by 12 album, I think technically it's like 11 and three quarters. It's just a hair shorter than 12 by 12, but it would fit on a shelf a lot easier than um, than like the D-Ring album I showed you. So that is an advantage. This is my heritage book. So on my side of the family, these are all my heritage photos. Um, so you can see the nice thing is there's not much of a space between two pages if you're doing a two page spread same thing with postbound you don't have that break between a two page spread like you would with um with a d-ring album so what i mean there let me show you just if that doesn't make sense if you look here let me see i'll get a two page two page layout here okay there's there's hardly any space between those pages so they kind of flow across and they look nice but if i'm looking at my big album here my d-ring and i've got a two page this isn't a two-page spread, but you can kind of get the idea. It's all baseball related. You've got a big gap in the middle between your page protectors. So that's what I mean about just like looking at a two-page spread and how it's a little bit nicer when you're in a when you're in a more compressed album like that. Um, but anyway, the strap hinge ones, um, they're nice. I decided to use this for my heritage book because I knew I had a limited amount of um of vintage photos from my side of the family so i knew that i could accommodate this you can get page protectors to go over the pages i don't have them on all of mine here um and you've got these like nice i like these they have like little metal edges and they're easy to flip through um and i went ahead and bought enough refills so that i'd have enough from my book because i'm not sure how long these are going to be available but you know if you have some of these books these um these pages in your stash then and these albums in your stash they're a great album i would definitely use them if you have one i don't know how long they'll be available west trim crafts also made them and made their refills but i mean you can expand these really wide these the spine pulls out and will go very wide so i mean you can you can fit a lot in these albums and they don't have that kind of you know they don't feel like they're going to fall apart like sometimes when you extend a postbound album it kind of feels like it wants to twist and fall apart or on the D-rings it feels like the uh, the rings want to pull apart on you so they're a really sturdy album and if you can find one then it's definitely a good bet um, if you have any questions about albums leave a comment below if you have a favorite album go ahead and leave that too tell us what your favorite album is and what you plan on scrapbooking in it um, I hope this scrapbooking tutorial helped you we're gonna go through the basics in this series of videos and hopefully get you guys scrapping without the guilt and overwhelm that we've been feeling over the past few years. So please give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Um, subscribe, tell your friends, share this with your friends. If you've got friends that are interested in scrapbooking, share this series of videos. I'll have them in a playlist when they're all done. And um, I hope that's gonna help everyone get their pictures in albums and off their computers and phones. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.